give you the little inner circle comments that make you think a little more. And when I get done, you should all say, mm, I never saw that before. Like he says, let the one without, without sin throw the first stone. Well, Moses comes down the mountain with the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments. They're made of stone. And he throws the stones down. <laughs> and then in the garden, he'll tell St. Peter, he'll tell us he went a stone's throw away from St. Peter. And when they go to the grave on Easter Sunday morning, the stone had been moved away. You don't get that at the other churches. You only get that stuff here. You see the bigger picture, you see? But it's a great story which teaches us some very important points. I saw about a week ago something I've never seen. It was life-size chess pieces. I'm a pretty good chess player. Like the pawns are about this high. The king and queen are like as tall as me, six foot tall. I mean, it's really cool. You know, you watch, I mean, and people are playing with it really cool. I saw it on TV. And I tell you that story because this is a chess game going on. And the woman is nothing more than a pawn. The woman doesn't matter in this story. Okay, they could find millions of people committing adultery. I still could today. That's not hard to find. She's just a pawn that they're using. They're after the king, and that's Jesus, to try to trap him and checkmate. If he says, well, stone her, then they're going to say, what happened to all that mercy you talk about? And if he says, don't stone her, they're going to say, are you saying Moses was wrong? A man can get crucified for that. There is no answer that Jesus can give. So he says nothing, which was a smart thing to say, because there's nothing he can say and avoid trouble. He just writes on the ground. And he takes the focus off of their, their sting operation on her. They must have known she was committing adultery. They didn't just walk into that. And the entrapment case against him. And then he turns it to where the case should be. The woman's not a piece of a chess piece. She's a human being. She's a real human being like me and you. And the only thing that matters in the story is, will she go and sin no more? And it doesn't tell us. Much like the older son last week, who's mad because they're throwing the party, it doesn't tell us that he came into the party or not. We don't know. That's when, when you go home after Mass, you should ask yourself those questions. Hmm, what's the, what's the next step in the story for me to kind of figure out? Do you think she changed her life? Well, I think she did for this reason. That Jesus was a genius. They were using punishment. Shame her, humiliate her. He was using mercy. Punishment changes behavior, but mercy changes the heart. Most of you have kids, grandkids. You know, punishment will get them to behave for, for a day, but mercy should go deeper. And when he understands that he's loved, he won't be defensive because he did something wrong. He may actually understand why he did it. And that might lead to a change for the long haul. You don't treat the symptom, you treat the cause. If your spouse or boyfriend's looking at pornography, that's just a symptom. The cause is something bigger and deeper. You can throw all the magazines away. If he has the problem in his heart, you're, not, you're still going to have the problem. But mercy lets us not be defensive and look deeper and say, why do I commit that sin? Mercy gives you room, punishment gives you fear. And that only lasts so long. I tend to obey the speed limit when I see a trooper. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> that only works a while. Mercy deals with the future. Punishment deals with the past. Jesus, she wasn't just a piece of chess. Man. She, he cared about her soul. He cares about ours, too. Let us stand, my friends.